What's up, guys? Kanal here of Bulls on Wall Street. Guys, I've got a video for you today, all right? I want to talk to you about zero DT options. Zero T DT options has been all the rage of the last, like, year or so, but there haven't been really very many good videos made on it or a coherent strategy that you can actually use. So today's video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what zero DT options are, and then I'm going to go into a trading strategy that's working and dissect a trade that we did in Tesla on Friday where the dang zero DT options went from 60 cents to seven dollars now i didn't capture that whole move as i'm a piker but i'm gonna go into detail on how to catch it and then how to ride it and then go over some of the mistakes i made in the trade also so let's start with what the heck a zero dt option is so zero dt option means zero days to expiration or zero dt for short these are options contracts that expire and become void the same day that they're traded meaning they can go to zero because they expired that day. When an options reaches this stage, there's not much more time left to act on the right to buy or sell the underlying asset. The window is small, and the move that the trader is plotting needs to happen fast because you can lose right your premium as you start going to the end of the day if it's not moving. So why would we want to trade this? Well, because it is actually expiring that day, if you can catch a runner... It can move in exponential ways, 100, 200, 300 percent with not even that big of a move. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about trade we did in Tesla and then even a slower one in coin where I still ripped almost 400 percent on my lottos using a very, very simple strategy. So let's first talk about Tesla. So Tesla had a piece of news out in the morning by Barclays. Barclays put a note out that they would probably miss their delivery numbers for the third quarter and you got a little bit of a reaction at the open and then it didn't do anything the rest of the day the reason it didn't do anything the rest of the day was it hadn't got picked up yet and then the market itself was flying if you see the qqqs it had gapped up and it was cruising up and it ran a little bit over one percent at some point and ran right into the anchored vwap from the fomc day and which is like a kind of surefire short and it kind of rolled over into the close but i was watching this and I noticed that the QQQs was having trouble getting over the anchored VWAP from the FOMC date. And that's a big no-no. You want to always anchor your VWAPs from like significant events. And if you can't get over it, then it usually means that the sellers are in control. So while this is happening, I'm noticing Tesla. If you see here this dotted line, this is your red to green area. Red to green is a trigger in a momentum market only for a potential long as it's signifying some type of change in course of the stock meaning it's down on the day now it's ripping to the upside when i saw tesla sitting there right and it, see how it just can't hold this red to green spot can't hold this red to green spot and that's actually been the short spot of the last couple of weeks in a majority of these tech stocks i've got my eye on it now i don't want to take a short in it as it breaks under the vwap because there's a history of just breaking under the vwap and breaking back over see how it breaks under the vwap breaks back over so then when it broke back into the vwap over here and i'm thinking that the market's going to top out i still don't want i still don't want to take that short what i'm waiting for is right the 9 EMA to come on it and start to congeal so as it's starting to go here go here go here you know, now I'm starting to get into it. And so, you know, I ended up entering the trade at 1148 Central Time. So that's 1248 Eastern Time, around 254, right? 253.78. So right into this zone here, I'm adding this bad boy as it breaks down its bear flag. And now you got your 9 EMA coming down on it. Now, what I want to do is supercharge and goose this, right, using options. And so, what I'm going to be doing is I always take the strike price under. So I take the 252s. I take the 252s, which is a good, I mean, that, that, that's a, the 252s is a good spot because it's like you're still pretty close. So you're not like a, doing necessarily a lotto on it. And you can really get some hot chatters on this thing, right? So I ended up loading in the contracts at around 66 cents as it starts to speed up here. And it's coinciding with that breakdowns so i got a 66 cent average and then dudes 
it's off to the races, right? This is what can happen with zero DTE. So as Tesla is starting to speed up to the downside, like look at the reaction. And you can actually trade the charts on this too and just kind of start nibbling as it starts to pull back into the VWAPs. I prefer to use the stock chart. It's just because I always have that up. But you can keep the options chart on it too, like TC2000 has options charts also. And now you're off really to the races. And so I'm hitting into the 252s and... As always, I pikered out of this a little bit early. You know, I took my first half for a dollar. Then I covered some at 252. Then I covered some at the 250. So in the end, like I took about four points on most, you know, on my last lottos of the trade. But like I ended up getting like 300% on them. And so I ended up sadly getting out of them a little bit under two bucks, like at two bucks and some change. And I was feeling pretty good, like, especially on those, like, last three to five contracts or whatever I had as the lottos. I made 300% on these bad boys. I was feeling pretty good about them. And then all of a sudden, right, what I didn't realize is, you know, as the stock starts to speed up, because I'm just starting to trade these a little bit more, as the stock starts to speed up, how much it can move is just crazy. We call these account builders, right? It's like, look, if you have... 20 contracts at 66 cents it's going to cost you right 1400 bucks but like you might be able to roll this into your know, 5 10 grand if you do it correctly so keys to the trade right obviously you need a speed up it's not going to do it unless you have a speed up so you got to understand first of all the structure on the daily chart super bearish then you have a bearish intraday chart it couldn't go green on the day and then the third part, which I think is important, is that there's a piece of news out there that's going to propel it, especially in a skittish market. And so I wish that I had held a little bit longer, but I think, you know, where I made my mistake was not covering around the 250s, the last of it. It was r really just like not re-entering this thing right here as the momentum started to speed up or, you know, as you're starting to go, like you can start to see, right? Like you start to get some of these pullbacks in this thing or some flags right here. This is where I should have re-added. You know, I don't think I would have chased this thing back up here. It would have been too wild. But this flag right here, you got the 9 EMA right there. I should have loaded back in. So it ended up being a good trade, but I could have done a lot better. Now, simultaneously, like what I was doing was I was also, we were also in this coin. And so, you know, I shorted coin right here. You know, I added a few. I started around 74. Then I added a few at 72.70. And it wasn't like I went for like a huge run. Like I covered half at 71.86, right? Covered some at 71.22. Like it wasn't like a big elongated trade. But like you could see like what was happening with these bad boys. Like dudes, like I ended up really catching like some nice, some nice rippers on this, you know. I had 286% on the 74s, 150 on the 72s, and, like, nothing, you know. And then by the time the lottos came out, like, I was up 400% on the last of them. Now, it wasn't like I had, like, 100 contracts that, you know, I, I held the last for 400%. These are just my lottos. Like, my last, you know, 5 or 10 is usually how I do things because these are, like, pretty cheap contracts. You know, I ended up getting them at, like, 50 cents, 60 cents. Um, the original ones, but same type of deal. Look at this. You know, you start to break down. And so before the market even rolls over, this thing is already rolling red. And then you have a bear flag here on the daily chart. So we already kind of know this thing is about to get gassed, right? So as this thing has started to trend, like see here, I get this level here, right at the daily chart. This is called aligning on multiple time frames. So I got the level here in the daily chart. And now like what I'm going to be doing Right, is as it breaks under that level, and I have coincidentally an intraday pattern, I'm going to be shorting right where the breakdown is in the daily and the bear flag is intraday. So, nothing crazy. This is something you guys can do right now. And then you start to really look at this like you only push down a few bucks. And man, these contracts were going freaking nuts on them, you know, as we started to go through these. And, you know, I ended up taking a pretty good rip on them, and the contracts were cheap, like they were 50, 60 cents, and you can get some good chatters on this thing. So this is what zero DTE is, but this is the thing with this. If they don't work right away, like say this coin, if it had just broken over the top of this range, so I had a 30 cent risk here, 30 cents, nothing more, 
30 cents. If it had even gone sideways like three, four more candles, I would have cut it and probably tried to re-enter it as it speeds up. You don't want to sit there and let these things go sideways at the end of a day on Friday because you will lose all your money. So you want to make sure you don't throw too much money at it. And then the second part is if it starts to go sideways, cut it and re-enter it. I think that's a huge help. So guys, let me know if you have any questions on this. I'm still out here in Italy, so sorry I don't got my you know, epic cameras or mics or anything like that. But I still want to share as much information with you guys as possible. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care. I love you guys. Peace.